They're space age technology. Prehistoric beasties. Strong women. Shocking confrontations. And Gorilla's ready for some deep sea diving. It's Robot Monster, but is it watchable? Thank you, pre-recorded clapping, and welcome everybody to Is It Watchable? I'm your host, Paul. Better bring the pets inside and lock up the kids, because it's Alien Invasion Week. We Earthlings love us some aliens. From the tough, to the sexy, to the friendly, to the terrifying. Films featuring extraterrestrials have been a mainstay of theaters for decades. But while we still wonder and debate if there's other intelligent life in our universe, it wasn't that long ago they wondered if there was other intelligent life in our solar system. The advent of the space race fueled the public's imagination of extraterrestrial life, and nearby planets were looked upon as potential homes to little green men. Martians in particular were a favorite of Hollywood screenwriters and featured in such films as War of the Worlds, Red Planet Mars, Devil Girl from Mars, Invaders from Mars, Abbott and Costello go to Mars, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, and way too many more to list. You would think a good telescope would rule out our own moon, but the creators of the 1953 classic robot monster would beg to differ. Johnny and his sister Carla are playing unsupervised in what appears to be the middle of nowhere. They come across two strangers in a cave who say they're archaeologists. One of the strangers pulls Johnny on his lap and puts his arms around him. It was a different time. The kid's mother and older sister show up at the cave looking for him. Apparently they chose this godforsaken place to have a picnic and the kids promise to take a nap after eating. Johnny, at the camp I used to go to, we used to have to take a nap after lunch right up until we were 14. So it turns out that after they eat, they all take a nap. What? Anyway, Johnny wakes up and sneaks off to the cave, but just as he arrives, he gets struck by lightning, I think. Then we get this. That was like a fever dream, completely out of left field and seemingly unrelated. And both of those scenes you just saw, the unfortunately real looking fight between the caiman and the lizard and the stop motion dinos, were actually lifted from other films. Johnny wakes up and finds some very 1950s looking tech on a wobbly end table surrounded by bubbles. Next we get our first look at the robot monster, but let's face it, this getup has become so infamous that most have seen this costume without ever seeing the movie. Johnny secretly watches as the robot monster, or Roman, calls his robot monster boss on what looks like a monitor made out of wood. Here we get more exposition about how the Roman uses calcinator beams not to make everyone's bones stronger, but to cause atomic wars between the nations of Earth wiping out all life. All that is except for eight survivors. Now Roman's job, of course, is to find those eight. Johnny runs to what looks like a basement without a house, and suddenly the old archaeologist from earlier is now his father, and the mom is wearing some futuristic looking dress. I promise there's some lazy convenient logic for this later. Johnny explains that the Roman knows they're alive as the older sister walks in wearing the same dress as the mom. Apparently those wood monitors are all the rage because the family has the exact same model as Roman and gets a video call from him. Okay, so at first he's completely unaware that there's anybody left alive on the entire planet. And now he's able to contact the few survivors directly via video phone? During the call, the family watches footage of the Earth's destruction and learns that they're the only ones left. Next we find that Roy, the younger archaeologist from earlier, is still alive and also his shirt is ripped up. If the atomic guns can't stop him. It's not for him. It's for us. Either. Roy notices that all the survivors, including two unseen astronauts, were previously injected with an experimental serum that the father created. The professor here spends his entire life trying to discover a serum, an antibiotic serum that will cure all diseases, even the common cold. And so, who does he experiment on with his first injections? Himself, his family, myself, and Jason and McLeod. Therefore... The great antibiotic is also the immunizer to Roman's death ray. The two astronauts we've been hearing about try to escape in a rocket only to be blown out of the sky by the Roman's cosmic blast. Also, the spaceship they were heading for is destroyed, but not before we get a brief glimpse of someone's arm holding it up. They decide to try to reason with Roman by calling him on the view screen. While doing so, Alice catches Roman's eye and he demands to negotiate with her alone. Alice is up for it, but since she's a woman and all, the group refuses to let her go and ties her up. While they struggle with Alice, Johnny, like an idiot, runs off to meet with Roman. What are you doing here, boy? I think you're just a big bully, picking on people smaller than you are. 
Now I will kill you. You look like a pooped out pinwheel. Meanwhile, Roy unties Alice and the two go looking for Johnny. During their search and while fully believing that Johnny is still in danger, they decide to make out. And it must have been some makeout session because they return to the family hovel and announce that they want to get married. It may sound silly to you, but Alice and I want to get married and we were wondering how you'd feel about performing the ceremony. So yeah, they take a break from trying to avoid their impending deaths and hold a wedding ceremony. And then, with Roman murderously wandering about, they decide to head out on a honeymoon. I'll go get my things and then we'll go. But God knows they can't leave without flowers, so Carla is allowed to chase after them alone to deliver some. Now notice how she doesn't go back in the same direction she came. Roman calls his boss to report another kill while also making it obvious that he's starting to have it pretty bad for Alice. The plan should include one living human for reference in case of unforeseen contingency. That doesn't bode well for Roy because when Roman stumbles across them pitching moon next to a bush on their honeymoon, he goes into a jealous rage and tosses Roy off a cliff and takes Alice back to his cave. Meanwhile, the parents find Carla dead. During the burial, the mother is understandably beside herself with grief while the father and Johnny act like the family cat ran away. No regret, Johnny. We enjoyed her as long as she was with us, and now somehow we have to find a way to live without her. Suddenly, Roy runs down a hill like a track star, tells the group that Alice has been captured by Roman, and drops dead. They formulate a plan to have Johnny distract Roman while they save Alice. So they call Roman and tell him that they're ready to give themselves up, but Roman is kind of in the middle of some alone time with Alice. You promised us a painless death if we give ourselves up. Come and get us. You can wait. Call me again at another time. The group shows up at the cave anyway, and Roman takes off after Johnny while the parents rescue Alice. Upset that Roman's feelings for Alice are distracting him from his job, Roman's boss decides to kill Roman just before he can kill Johnny. Then, to kill the remaining humans, Roman's boss unleashes dinosaurs, giant lizards, and earthquakes. Finally, the big Shyamalanian twist. Take it easy, son. You're all right. Darling, you all right? <laughs> you gave your mother quite a scare. Yes. Here it was getting dark and no Johnny. You're alive? Yeah. Her too? Boy, was that a dream or was it? Yup, the dreaded it was all a dream ending. Or was it? Or was it? Or was it? I swear to you, I did not loop that last part. It repeats just like that in the actual movie. Robot Monster was originally meant to be enjoyed in glorious 3D. And while watching it that way wouldn't improve it much, the general consensus is that the 3D looked pretty amazing, even if what they were shooting didn't. But any movie would have a tough time looking good on Robot Monster's budget. $16,000. That's less than the price of a Ford Focus. They cut cost everywhere. The most obvious place, of course, was Roman's costume. Essentially a gorilla suit with a diving helmet. Next, you probably noticed that nearly the entire movie was set outside during the day. That would alleviate some of the costs associated with lighting and crew and make filming much faster as there'd be less equipment to set up and move around. And finally, speaking of fast, Robot Monster was shot in four days. Four days. The less you have your cast and crew around, the less you have to pay them. And while all the cost cutting had a huge negative impact on the production values, it had a huge positive impact on the bottom line. When your movie only costs $16,000 to make, even a poor showing at the box office is going to result in profit. So while Robot Monster only made a million dollars, that's 60 times its budget, not a shabby ROI. So Robot Monster, is it watchable? This movie is a great example of so bad it's good. While it has all the hallmarks of a good bad movie like funny effects and god awful writing, what really pushes this movie into rarefied air is the do it yourself look and feel of the production. Robot Monster looks exactly like the type of movie you would have made in 6th grade with your friends and your parents camcorder. For costumes and props, you'd use whatever was laying around the house. Spaceships would fly courtesy of a buddy dressed all in black with the lights out. You might have even recruited a reluctant little brother or sister to round out the cast. Well that's it for this episode. Be sure to join me next week when I risk being labeled an SP by reviewing the John Travolta dumpster fire that is Battlefield Earth. And don't forget to subscribe.